Following Rob's popular videos on a couple of Oxford secret tunnels, he received a number of suggestions concerning others that may or may not exist. In this video, he attempts to clean up the Oxford underground scene by exploring some of them. Let's start digging. Here is the almost hidden eastern entry to our first tunnel, which is in Horsepath, just to the east of Oxford. It was part of a railway link between Princess Risborough and Oxford and first opened in 1864. It finally closed in 1963, though it did have a brief alternative life in 1999 when illegal raves were held there. <laughs> it is a scary place nowadays and it is reserved for bats, not ravers, though it is now not popular with either apparently. It is not, of course, open to the public. No neglected, it seems in pretty good condition and has a total length of about a third of a mile. Its western end terminates in a wildlife conservation area of Horsepath. Leaving Horsepath, we enter the city through Headington and turn into the old High Street to find an intriguing and ancient footpath called Cuckoo Lane. It runs all the way down to Headington Hill Park and Magdalen College and for that reason is featured in the third of my videos on C.S. Lewis. It passes through land which belonged to Headington House, a rather grand mansion bought by William Wooten Wooten in 1848. Here it is how it appears nowadays. In Wooten Wooten's day, it looked over a large park right down to what is now London Road, as you can see from this map. You can also see that Cuckoo Lane cuts right across Wooten Wooten's view to the south, and he did not like that, so he buried it. Stone walls were built on either side of the lane, and bridges were built across it to provide access for his family and servants to the lower part of the grounds. This is nowadays devoted to housing, and I'm sure that Wooten Wooten would have liked that even less, though his tunnel-like cutting still runs between Osler Road and the old High Street. It's pleasant enough, if just a little bit gloomy. Heading west, we can follow Cuckoo Lane to its termination at Marston Road. Magdalen College members can then enter the college's wonderful grounds, but we are making for Magdalen College School. These two have many historical connections, but of interest here is May morning, when the choir has to cross from the other side of Magdalen Bridge to sing in the summer to the vast early morning crowds from Magdalen Tower. As you can see, it is a very busy road, so how are they to cross? Through a tunnel, of course! The entrance is on the school side of the River Charwell. You can just see it from the pavement and it is of course normally firmly locked. It emerges alongside the Charwell and beneath the college's rather ugly Wainfleet building. The choir can then ascend steps up to the college side of the road and then safely walk across the bridge to do their angelic duty from the top of the tower. Next stop is further along the High Street, and it's a pub. Well, it was. The Mitre was generally regarded as the oldest pub in Oxford, and was the starting point for my Oxford pub tours. It is now a pizza place. Mm. The above ground part of the Mitre was rebuilt in the 17th century, and it became a large inn serving the busy stagecoach industry. However, the below ground section is much older, and it is that which interests us here. After the Reformation, Catholics were oppressed, yet the Mitre was a recusant establishment. Of course, Catholics could not be seen to enter such a place, and this is where the Chequers, further up on the other side of the High Street, enters the story. Its cellar was claimed to be linked to the mitre by a tunnel. There is more to this story, which you can hear on one of my ghost tours. Stuart Panter, Oxford's adventurous underground explorer, was given a map that seemed to identify the tunnel at the mitre end. And this is what he found. 
He started at the beer cellar, which is about two or three metres under the pavement of the high street. Using his map, he then went further along to an unused room and then climbed down into a chamber that did indeed extend under the high street. This had clearly been abandoned for some time, and Stuart estimates that it extends about two-thirds of the way across the road, and has then been plastered over. It does not point towards the checkers, and Stuart heard no chanting from the Catholic monks who were allegedly incarcerated there. <laughs> Moving up the high street past the checkers, we arrive at Carfax, which was as you can see, pretty much the northern limit of the many properties owned by Oxford's Jewish residents back in the 13th century. These are shown in yellow and brown. My interest in this arises from this clip taken from a short BBC News item titled Hidden Oxford. This cellar survives from that era and leaves a mystery six metres below street level. So what's behind the door? Well, this is, this is a doorway that was not blocked up until the 1930s, and it leads to a massive tunnel system. The lady announcing the massive tunnel system is Pam Mannix, an expert on Jewish Oxford, and thank you, Pam, for your help with this part of the video. She provided me with this map obtained from the Town Hall archives, which shows that the tunnel system is, in fact, a fascinating collection of interconnected cellars beneath the extensive Jewish houses. The clip was actually recorded in one of these cellars, which lies two floors beneath Oxford's 19th century town hall, which itself faces St. Aldate Street. That cellar is now called the Crypt or Plate Room, and I have coloured it in red on the map. In the 15th century, it was the cellar of the Falcon Inn, the video starts at ground level, just above that locked door in the cellar, and takes us across St Aldate's, then follows the tunnel system at ground level towards Carfax, where the existing Santander bank stands on the corner. Here you can see the location of the Swindlestock Tavern, which was itself below ground and surely formed a part of the tunnel complex. My guess at its likely location is shown in blue. This is where the famous battle between town and gown began on St Scholastica's day in 1355. Turning left into the modern day Queen Street, previously known as Great Bailey Street, we can imagine that complex of tunnels stretching under the ground towards the existing Marks and Spencer store. Now for the bad news. The tunnel complex is no longer there, or at least not as it was. Council engineers informed Pam Mannix that the cellars had collapsed or were infilled many years ago, and the entry below the town hall was locked and blocked in the 1930s. I've picked up a few mentions of a tunnel connecting this complex to the castle, but have found no real evidence of it. Nevertheless, let's head in that direction to New Road and then turn into Bulwark's Lane, where a recent find has been reported. As you can see, the lane was blocked at the time of this video whilst work was going on. Here's a nicer approach from the other end, plus an older image of the middle section. The development is an expansion of St. Peter's College to establish Castle Bailey Quad on what was Castle Hill House. During the work, a secret passageway was discovered. It is claimed to be from the late 18th or early 19th centuries and linked to properties owned by Daniel Harris, the governor of Oxford Prison at that time. Unfortunately, all we have here is an entry to the tunnel, now bricked up. Crossing New Road to the castle, we have a much more exciting tunnel to explore. This one's from the 19th century and was created for a very special purpose. Here is the old prison building, which lies in the grounds of the 11th century castle of Oxford. Nowadays, it is a luxury hotel called Malmaison and here we are walking within the basement level of it, 
passing the entrances to the hotel rooms. Fortunately, one of the original cells has been preserved, as you can see. Three men occupied this tiny space and the modern luxury twin rooms were converted from three of these. Trials took place in a nearby building facing New Street, which is now called the Ode County Hall, and the two were linked by a tunnel. So no chance of escape for the prisoners. The accused were led from their cells down these steps and along this deep and damp tunnel then up again to a heavily barred metal gate, which was secured by an equally heavy key. This upper tunnel leads to a small set of holding cells, and in one of these, the notorious kidnapper, dubbed the Black Panther, was held during his trial back in June of 1976. Further along are the steps to the smaller of the two courtrooms, this one is said to have changed little over the years and is now in regular use as the coroner's court. In the past, sentenced criminals were said to be sent down. So, we two go back down the steps, turn left under the coroner's court and then enter into another tunnel. This one leads to the other courtroom and it is quite lengthy but not as dank and gloomy as the lower one. At the end there is a large door to the left and beyond that the steps which led to the courtroom itself. This is the view from the balcony above. This room is now the main meeting place of Oxfordshire County Council and the steps that we saw below would have emerged at the location indicated. There we go. Are there any other tunnels underneath Oxford? I don't know. I get rumours about them, but when I follow them up, they do not lead anywhere. Oh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and click that notify bell. Bye bye.